This is a video for my Auto Tabber project, a tool developed in Python that converts music files into tabs for guitar. Tablature is a form of writing music specifically for guitar that represents how to play the song in terms of the physical positions themselves where fingers should be placed along the neck. One of the primary reasons tabs are used so much more commonly than sheet music is that a given note, as represented on a piece of sheet music, can be played on multiple places on the neck of a guitar, which creates a lot of complexity for beginners. Making tabs from scratch usually takes listening to a song about a million times and painstakingly finding the right notes and the best places to play them, and then typing them all in as you go. The goal of this program was to democratize this process by making the conversion from a music file to a tab super easy. The MIDI file format is a kind of music file that stores the song as a set of instructions for a computer, instead of storing a representation of the sound wave. It allows music files to be much more compact in size as well as much more easily edited, transformed, and played with and that's what the auto-tabbing program capitalizes on. The basic idea is the program reads the set of instructions in the MIDI file format and stores the sequence of notes that makes up the song. The song is then cut into chunks. You can think of a chunk as a section of time beginning when one or more notes are played simultaneously and ending just before the next notes would be played and the next chunk would begin. Since all the notes present in a chunk have to be played at once, they demand a certain finger arrangement in the left hand so that every string is being played at the correct fret to yield those notes. This is where the first challenge comes up, identifying a fretting scheme to play the notes in a chunk. To do so, I thought of the different possibilities within a branching tree structure, where the different strings on the instrument were layers in the tree, and the frets on which a desired note could be played were nodes in that layer. Knowing that I would need some selection criteria since only one fretting scheme could be chosen for a given chunk of the song, I used a graph algorithm to search for the least cost path through this structure to identify the best options for fretting schemes where the cost function is based on ergonomic difficulty after physically infeasible options are removed. The next challenge to finding a solution is the problem that fretting schemes can't be selected in isolation. By and large, the difficulty in playing a song comes from the transitions between hand positions, and so the choice of any one scheme for any one chunk is also dependent on the neighboring chunks. Again, graph algorithms were the key to a solution here. Considering each chunk of the song as a layer in a graph, and each fretting scheme for the notes present in that chunk as a node in that layer, you can then think of the song as a network of nodes where each layer is fully interconnected with the next. That helps you see how there are a potentially massive number of ways one could play a given song. Again, least cost path algorithms provide a solution to find which path should be taken through this network. By assigning a difficulty cost based on ergonomics to the transitions between fretting schemes, employing these well understood algorithms provides a solution. So does it work? You can judge for yourself. So there you have it. I hope you found this video interesting and valuable. All relevant links are in the video description, including the Google Collaboratory space where you can try out the program for yourself. One interesting application for this program is that you could modify it to accept any constraint you could program in. For example, you could limit the playing instruction to include fretting no more than three strings at a single time. This could be useful to beginners or even to finger amputees. One important thing to understand when using the program is that the cost function is critical and can be edited to suit one's needs as well. By making open string selections low cost, for example, the program is biased in favor of chords with more open strings. This can create really cool and robust sounding chords when playing some strings open while others at higher frets. On the other hand, if a poorly defined cost function is used, the program can define chords that are more difficult than their cost function actually reflects, making a tab overly difficult to play or even unplayable. One thing I hope anyone watching can take away is how graph theory is really underrepresented in light of how ubiquitously it can be applied and how powerful it can be for generating solutions to interesting problems. I would encourage you to think about where graphs can be used to represent problems in your own life. Lastly, the tab for the Family Guy theme that I played is publicly available. Link in the description as well. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.